Hey Andy Mogul, Zach Finvark here for Backyard FX. Today's your effects, we're doing it on Hollywood Boulevard. Because you know, we live in LA, but we've never gone out of the studio. So, you know, we're gonna get right down into it. Our first tutorial submitted is by Chris Sparrow, and he does a man-eating plant. Let's uh, check it out. Hey, my name's Chris. Welcome to Backyard FX, the show that teaches you how to make cool effects for just a little bit of this. And today, we're gonna be making a man-eating plant. So today's budget is... $35. To build this plant, you'll need vinyl and latex tubing, elastic cord or rubber bands, thin picture hanging cable, a bunch of eye screws, small nuts and bolts that will fit through the hole of the eye screws, a dowel, pipe insulation, liquid latex, black, white, red, yellow, and various shades of green acrylic paint, some fake leaves, which I found on these tulips, and fake lilies. You will also need some foam packing material and a small piece of scrap wood. And if you want to give your plant somewhere to live, you'll need scrap plywood, a flower pot, and dirt moss or other ground cover. Time Woo! Cut your dowel into inch and a half sections. Drill holes into the end of each dowel and insert an eye screw. Next, cut your latex tubing into inch and a half sections. Slide a piece of tubing over one end of each dowel. Fold back the tubing and link the sections together with your nuts and bolts. Slide the tubing over this joint. Carefully drill holes near the end of each dowel, turn it over and do the same thing on the other side. Now screw more eye screws into the end of each of these holes. Next, run your cable through the eye screws. Use vinyl tubing at a joint to limit how far it can bend. To make the spine bend in an S shape, have the cable switch sides in the middle. Once you're satisfied with the movement, wrap the spine in the pipe insulation. Next, paint the stock green and set it aside to dry. To make the flower, first cut the flowers off the lilies. On the outside of each petal, staple the two sides together. Run a rubber band through the top of this ridge and leave it dangling inside. Next, remove the wires from the lily stems and use them to form a triangle that will act as a hinge for the petals. Bend the ends of the wires inward and temporarily tape these together. Cut out a wood triangle and drill holes in each point to fit the hinge wires and drill a hole in the center. Remove the tape and use some of the vinyl tubing in its place. Fit the hinge wires in the holes and put your mounting screw in the hole in the middle. Attach three eye screws on the underside and split the end of a short piece of cable into thirds, running each section through an eye screw and fastening it to each petal. This will form the mechanism that will allow you to open the flower. Form some thorns on the ends of each of the flower petals with liquid latex and tissue paper. Attach the rubber bands to the mounting screw with just enough tightness so that the petals will snap back into place. Using some foam packaging material or anything thin and pliable, cover the inside of the flower leaving the screw visible. With the flower wide open, attach this to the petals with liquid latex and tissue paper. Do the same thing on the outside of each petal to cover up the hinges. Once this is dried, paint is desired, blending into the original colors of the petals. Attach the leaves to the corners of this flower. To better control your puppet, attach some dowels to the end of the control cables. To give the flower a home, cut a piece of plywood smaller than the mouth of the pot and cut a hole in the middle of it big enough for the stem. Mix up some grayish brown paint and paint it. Set this in the flower pot and insert your flower. Cover the plywood with your ground material. You'll want to plan your shots out ahead of time so that you minimize the wear and tear on the puppet. In order to use your plant as a puppet, you'll need to remove it from the pot and film accordingly. If you have any questions, comments, or thoughts, make sure you leave a note down below. Bye, everybody. And now, the Random Effects Montage. Then we need more clips. So go to indiemogul.com slash submit to submit more random effects montage clips. Here we go. Harrison Ford or Chuck Taylors. Since we've already shown you how to make fake money with the briefcase of money, we might as well just show you how to cheat at gambling too with the ace up your sleeve, thanks to Devin Riley. Let's uh, let's watch it. I'm Devin Riley, and I'll teach you how to get your ace out of a hole. Shopping with it. Two foot-long pipe hangers, at least three inches of square-inch thick scrap wood, curtain hanger with one small clamping end, an old leather belt, 
inch long machine screws and nuts, a small sturdy rubber band, wire hanger, some aluminum pop rivets, 3 16 of an inch, some elastic, small pen spring, and some playing cards. Start by marking an inch and a half into the tip of each pipe holder, then make three quarter of an inch and two and a half inch strips of the rest. Once you're all marked up, use a rotary hand tool to cut your pipe holders into strips. Take your six two and a half inch and two one and a half inch strips, clamp them together, and drill out all the small holes to three sixteenths of an inch. Even out any unseemly ends and grind your tips to a uniform size. To ensure things move smoothly, remove any burrs or rough patches on the surface of your strips. Now we can move on to pop rivet. Make sure no excess metal remains to hinder pivoting. Load in a pop rivet and... Rivet together the ends of three long strips and one short strip, alternating top to bottom, and do the inverse with your remaining strips. Now, pop rivets aren't designed for movement, so these guys are gonna be really stiff. Work on loosening joints one by one until they swing freely with no resistance. Moving on to our curtain hanger, remove its clip, then take one half, cut off the back, and drill a 3 16th inch hole into its front. Load a pop rivet upside down through the rounded ends and into the hole under your clip. Rivet, loosen, and then fold it into itself. Load another pop rivet beside your clip, rivet, and loosen. Begin cutting or grinding down the bottoms of your pop rivets to a little less than the thickness of your nuts, and do the same for the rivet inside your clip. Next, cut a notch into one of your machine screws just below where the nut would rest in the top. Cut that screw to 9 16 of an inch, secure it into the hole beside your newest pop rivet, and secure a full size screw beside that. Mark about 3 inches into the top of your wood and drill a hole straight through the center which your inch long screw can be threaded through. Drill a similar hole through the side as close to the top and front as possible. Remove any excess wood from at least a quarter of an inch behind your top hole and mark a lengthwise line across the top of your wood. Cut along your line through the wood, stopping a quarter of an inch before your hole. Using a coarse grit, sand down the inside of your cut and any rough edges until your two prongs are wide enough to let a screw and rubber band pass through easily. Loop one side of your rubber band around the side screw between your two prongs and the other side around your notch screw. Secure your metal to the top of your wood and give it a test. Now, to fashion a trigger, clip a wire hanger and bend the end into something like this. Drill a hole halfway up the side of your wood between where your screws rest. Insert the bent end into this hole. Find a comfortable length for the other end of your trigger where your fingers can get to it, loop it around, and trim the excess. Hot glue your spring to the outside of your belt, glue the belt to the bottom of your wood over the spring, trim, and drill new notches. Finally, glue your elastic strip into a loop that fits around your arm to keep the belt from slipping. I added a bit of fun foam to the end for increased comfort and stability and to act as a guide for the trip. And now you're done! Hooray! Thanks for sticking around through a very auditiony episode of Backyard Effects. I'm Devin Riley, and... This banana tastes like magic marker. Look! You can buy a Tron disc! So that's it for Backyard Effects and Your Effects for 2010. I'll see you guys next year. I gotta go back to the studio.